you know, I really haven't fixed anything on this RV yet. Have I really made any repairs? Has it just been a process of checking and moving forward? Checking off a list and I don't know that I've actually had to fix anything. <laughs> um, yeah, there's been a lot of careful diagnosing and no, I mean, no, not diagnosing, just kind of having a look and things, make sure things seem to be in order and, you know, cleaning it up and, you know, checking things out before I filled, filled the water thing up and I don't know what all I've done to it yet, but I really haven't fixed anything, have I? Don't worry about this, okay? Nothing to see here. Just a little small hiccup we'll deal with soon. It's not a showstopper. And a little fix needs done. It's nothing expensive. Uh, some of you out there give me way too much credit for being, I don't know, uh, this fix-it guru. And maybe I am to a degree, but you know, it's, uh, I think it's too much credit to say, uh, Dave, you wrote the book on old RV repair. You know, I, I'd be, I'd be lucky to get a, maybe a small paragraph in this, in a big book. All right. I'm, I'm not, I'm not the know it all of all things, uh, especially the more modern ones. And, the, you know what, some of the controls, the, how to operate a, the furnace and air conditioning, even in the new ones, I'm like, I need the manual to fix it. I, you know, I couldn't even run it, let alone fix it. So the older ones are, are so much more basic uh, and easier to kind of get your get a grasp on. Uh, what was the other comment? Is there anything that you can't fix? <laughs> there is so much that I can't fix. Uh, the, you know, these these uh, old vehicles tend to you know have a basic 12 volt system in them. They're from old cars and trucks that I've had way back in the day, uh, the old tractors and stuff. And these older ones are not too far. They have a few more systems, but they're still pretty basic. And the two, there's two things that have allowed me to, uh, it's kind of opened the, opened the gates that have allowed me to move forward and figure out so much, more, so many more things. Uh, one is a lesson that I'll mention later in this, uh, here in a little bit in the video. Because something's pre, part of this is pre-recorded, so we're gonna jump back in time. The other one would be like my favorite. No, not my favorite tool. Uh, I do have some favorite tools, but it would be if I had to pick one tool that allowed me to fix more things than any other tool. It, it would be a multimeter or a, a you know little voltmeter. And believe it or not, you know I don't know all the functions. You know. Uh, there's just all these things on the dial and what's for the, you know, it's <laughs> start talking ohms and volts and resistance and current and amps and, you know, it just start, it's like, uh, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm done. But, you know, fortunately there's like two basic things, two basic functions I, I use on it and two only that, uh, once I got my head wrapped around them and, you know, a light came on and and i know i feel like a lot of you out there uh enough i see in the comments that are kind of borderline you know you're good do-it-yourselfers and but might be borderline you know I, maybe you know just it's, it's just such a you know afraid of electricity and in 12 volts pretty safe it's not like house current you know you're not gonna you're not gonna get lit up like house current will but uh, or, uh but back to, I feel like there's some, um, just some very, very basic things that, you know, if you wrap your head around those, just a couple of things, uh, you know, you could do, it open them same gates. You could do so much more. Uh, you know, one is just checking the voltage and, and, and you can take a battery, you know, you can take a, a double A battery or a triple A battery or whatever battery, you know, and, um, and test it and say oh okay i think i'm understanding how to check simple voltage uh another one is for checking continuity i mean that's just simply whether something's getting a connection or not with, with just those two being able to do those two things you can fix tons of problems okay this air could or the um the refrigerator we're going to look at well it's pre-recorded that i just looked at 
it was a perfect example it's full it's just it, that they had some of that going on you know is there voltage there or oops there was where'd it go it's we're chasing it is there a bad connection and, and you know being able to track that down so that that appliance is getting what it needs and i can't expect that refrigerator to work if it doesn't have what it needs you now it needs a good healthy 12 volts uh, uh continuous it doesn't need a bad connection where it's intermittent it's there and it's not it's fading whether you know it needs a good solid healthy 12 volts and not from bad batteries that are you know low and run down and partially drained that it's not getting it needs a good healthy you know 12 volts uh to operate properly and of course it needs propane uh you know the belly's in propane mode but i feel like i need to make a video and I, I'm, I'm gonna get wrapped up here um uh, I feel like I need to make a um, kind of a real basic tutorial video of, and I'll probably put it over on my other channel because it's kind of getting off the topic of RVing. It, you know, I think I'd focus on like just the multimeter, a little battery, maybe a couple of examples, a couple little setups that just show uh, just very, very some basic things. And, you know, if you can wrap your head around that, you know, same light can maybe come on, you know, and say, oh, I think, I think I'm getting this. You know, and, and, and it just, being able to do that, you can save so much, you know, trying to save or, you know, get somebody else, uh, try to find somebody else to do it or scheduling it. To, you know, that I got to take into the RV shop and try to schedule it in. Can they get me in? How long are they going to have it? And, and what's the bill going to be? Some of these things are really, really basic. Um, like I said, making sure it has what it needs to work. So what I, what I might do here in the coming week is I might make a video and put it over my other channel and I'll and I'll link to like in the next video, whatever I do, whatever video comes out here, I'll put, um, I'll remind you, I'll say, hey, I put the, I uploaded that video, go to this channel, which by the way, if you want to go ahead and subscribe uh, or go there and subscribe to so that you get a notification, either way, or like I say, I'll remind you, my other channel is Dave's Other Stuff. So just YouTube, search Dave's other stuff. Bang, the same, I think the same picture of me and Bella's on there. You'll, you'll recognize it. Uh, and that's that's where I put these uh, kind of off-topic things. And that channel is mostly, uh, you know, odd projects. Uh, the, the Maverick, you know, I got some videos of my 1971 antique Ford Maverick on there. Uh, messing up tinkering with it. My cousin's old 1965 Ford Falcon. Uh, getting it running one day after sitting for many years. Uh, some old tractors I used to restore uh, is just some that's where I put stuff that just don't seem to fit on this channel <laughs> so, all right um, anyway let's jump back in time to yesterday afternoon I'm gonna see if we can get this refrigerator cooperate we've had so much we've had so much luck uh, been lucky I really haven't fixed anything all right I replaced a couple of batteries Let's see if I can actually fix something for a change. There you go. I can fix. I can. I can fix everything, right? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> I really think that RV dealer uh, repair center just kind of declared this thing a basket case and really didn't give it a serious look at. And I still have high hopes for this refrigerator. I found a mess in here. I thought I'd start by looking. And you know what? For an older refrigerator. It does not look too bad in here. It does not look bad. I'm kind of surprised. But this little mess here, this is where the 12 volts comes back to the control board, uh, which is that black box there. And uh, let me see here, it is a mess. Uh, this orange wire that used to go somewhere, looks like it has been chewed on. Obviously a little rodent uh, must have made his house back here. Now, I haven't seen any real, any real uh, damage from rodents in here anywhere. But here, here we have some. And what is going on here? Uh, that looks like a questionable connection. This one here, definitely questionable. Look, there was bare wire they just taped up. That could have been trimmed and not fixed. And I think this red wire used to go there. <laughs> okay, so we got uh, we got a little some issue going on here, and uh, hmm. 
So we'll have to correct that first and then we'll uh, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> Here's something I learned back in uh, Votech school. Uh, took auto mechanics class. And uh, my old auto mechanics teacher, Mr. Franklin, uh, really, really nice guy. He, when it came to electrical systems, he said 90% of all electrical problems are due to a loose or dirty connection. Uh, so rarely is it, you know, maybe the component itself. So um, all that stuff needs checked out. All connections. We'll, check, we'll get them checked out here and repaired. And I think I blew a fuse. When I first went out, I was kind of just checking for voltage, uh, see if anything was out there. Intermittently, I was getting a little bit of, uh, you know, 12 volts out there. Uh, and then it seemed to, it seemed to uh, just go away. And I think because some of the wires are, are bare, <laughs> are bad connections, I think something touched and blew the fuse. I came in and checked this, uh, this in here, and it did this, uh, the fuse that goes in this slot was blown. And I got a, a nice new one here. And I'm gonna put that in and then just carefully go out and just recheck uh, to see what's what has power out there and what doesn't, what I need to watch out for uh, or tape off good. So actually while I'm working on it, I might come back in and pull this fuse back out until I get all the repairs made. And we'll go from there a bit. I just wanna verify, we got, we got a good 12 volts going out there. And here's the thing, uh, refrigeration units, whether it's a refrigerator, freezer, air conditioner, I'm not a I'm not a air conditioner guy, but you know I know the basics of making sure things do have good connections and power to them. Now, if they have good power to them and they still don't work, and it's more involved and internal, um, you know I, I might have to seek additional help. Uh, but I can get this far. All right, I just want to see if we're getting 12 volts anywhere. Um, I'm pretty sure this here, this green one here is the ground. What do we got here? Well, there's nothing on that one. Maybe. What about here? Actually, I probably need to back up and just and punt and just take my time here. Uh, yeah, let me, let me just take a few here. Well, the good news is we do have some healthy voltage out here. But th this mess needs cleaned up. It's, um, <laughs> it needs... And then we'll proceed and see if we can get anything going on with this. Progress. <laughs> One step at a time. Okay, the weak link here was, uh, yeah, that mess. And what I did was, these two orange wires coming out of here, what happened? Uh, one probably has a stripe on it, you know, being color-coded. Those were actually the positive and negative. Uh, okay. So, and then this one here is also another uh, negative, or ground, okay? So, a positive and two grounds and uh clean this mess all up now the wire you know it goes down into the motorhome and where it was bare at and chewed on uh it's getting kind of close here i don't know why there's no slack that pulls out so i really couldn't cut that off and put a new end on it hardly any room but what happened was um the wire itself was you know it was bare but it was a uh, it was in good condition it was just the insulation on it that was chewed away. So I put heat shrink tubing on each one. And uh, so now it's protected from hitting anything and shorting out. So that brought us up to here. We got a new connector on here and that's the uh, positive one going up to this block. And then with the other one, the negative one that goes up to this block. And then they transfer over to these, positive and negative that goes on up to the controller. So now, okay, no shorting, no bad connections. Uh, we got 12 volts going up to that, and I need to confirm that. But this other ground, it might have been like for a chassis ground or a backup. So what I did was I just put an eyelet on the end of it and a self-tapping screw and ground, uh, grounded the chassis of the refrigerator. So that should all be proper. At least the thing stands a chance of working now. Oh yeah, and this block where these go into and then come out to go up to the control thing, uh, these were all loose. So the, the wires were barely, it's one of the, I mean, they did not have a good connection. They were barely even hanging there. So, uh, you know, clean, uh, snug those all up. Actually sprayed that down a little bit of WD-40, worked the screws in and out, re, uh, redid two of the ends and put them back in there, new ends and all tightened down real nice. So that should be a good current, uh, good voltage going into the refrigerator now.
That does not mean it's gonna work. That means we at least corrected a, uh, a weak link, weak and broken links that at least it stands a chance. There it is, 13.03 volts. So that issue has been corrected. It's just like building blocks, <laughs> you know, you just, you you know, try to fix and correct the obvious what you can and keep your fingers crossed and you get enough of those, maybe things will start coming alive again. All right, there is a light bulb that goes up in there, but it is missing. Uh, yeah, I could test that and yeah, but I think what else I want to do here is, I don't know, we got controls here. We put it in, put it on coldest, we put it in gas mode. That switch seems a little bit stiff. And I'll have to check to see if the switch is actually uh, getting good contact. You know, the switch could be bad. Well, I'll see what I can do for the dang thing. Fingers crossed. Nothing seems to be happening. Although there is a little yellow light back there. So here's what I did. I put it in, I put the switch in propane mode. And nothing happened. And that's okay. And then I put it in electric mode. Oh, wait a minute. I on, intentionally I used the generator. And so I plugged it in the generator. I figure if it's in electric mode and the heating element uh, gets turned on, I should be able to hear that draw. You can hear the, the generator ramp up a little bit uh, running that heating element. And uh, so I ran the generator. I went and I put it in electric mode. And sure enough, I heard the uh, the generator picked up. So, if that he heating element starts putting heat in that chamber, or that's called a little chimney in there where the the things are, <laughs> the things. Uh, I, and I put the uh, I put a thermometer up in the freezer. So we're gonna let that go for a while. I'll check it later. And uh, if that refrigerator gets cold with the electric element, uh, that means. It'll get cold also with the gas, if I can get the gas working. Because that gizmo up there, it doesn't care what's heating it. It just needs to be heated. So, um, yeah, the electrical, the gas will too, if I can get the gas working. <laughs> if I don't have to buy a refrigerator. Because knowing me, I would, I would get a regular replacement. I wouldn't do the residential fridge thing. I really don't think I just really leaning against that. So let's come back forward. I, don't, I forget where I left off at with the last clip, but what the end result is this. All right, let's check. Uh, let's check the freezer. What's this in here? It's frozen solid. We got a salt block of ice. All right. And what's down here? Ah, uh, thermometer. What's that thermometer say? It is 42 degrees. So, 40, 42. That's pretty cool. And I don't have it uh, set on the coldest. So, I can make that a little bit colder. Dial that up just a little bit more. And uh, it, it's working. It's partly working. It's working in electric mode. And I think, as I said, uh, if it goes that far... It um, it just needs that heat, you know, from the the, the electric element to, to heat that coil or whatever's up in there. So if I can get the gas working, uh, it'll it'll cool too, you know, the LP. Now there are some rust marks back here, but I don't think they're critical or really affected it. But they're probably just from condensation dripping down. See, we got a little bit kind of ran down from somewhere, and just a couple of tiny little spots. Here, I think there's a condensation probably came on here, but there's a part of these that uh, have ammonia in the system. And somehow there's magic, there's witchcraft involved in when you heat the ammonia. Uh, you know, it turns one part from being hot to making cold. So, yeah, I'm not all that smart. You know, when it comes to the internals, I'm not an air conditioning, refrigeration guy. I, I don't know that stuff. 
but to me it's we're far enough along and it's working this much if i can get the gas working uh, i mean the cost of a new one of these new refrigerators is i mean at least 1500 probably closer to 1800 or 2000 so they're not cheap to be able to get this one running again is huge for me and i think i'm i'm just gonna go ahead and order there's no harm in it even if it wasn't necessarily the problem it'll be new and fresh i think there's a control board in here uh the control board might be fine uh it could be there's a problem with this gas valve or this little doohickey <laughs> see i'm not that smart uh you know it's got uh it's controlled by the uh um um main board so you know maybe i'll get a new uh and that valve could be sticky so um i don't know if it can be serviced you know clean take it apart and clean put back together or you know i might i might take a peek at that or i'll just see if there's a part number on there and just order a new uh, a new valve and a new board but i mean before that i'm gonna go ahead and trace um inspect the rest of these wires and connections real good like i keep saying yeah that's been my two biggest two the other two biggest points i've been making trying to make uh is any appliance or uh anything electrical i don't care if it's a light bulb or <laughs> right or charging your phone and the usb things messed up you know if the, if it doesn't have good connections if you're not getting good power if you're not giving it what it needs don't expect it to work right you get it <laughs> it, you know it needs good a good healthy 12 volts not low weak voltage not batteries that are low it needs good power and of course it needs the propane so uh that applies to so many things just making sure the unit that is in question has what it needs to begin with and 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 then it can be then maybe it'll just come to life or uh or it needs further diagnosis but that has to happen first all right i think that's going to be it for today's video um Oh, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up the last one seems to be we'll get back to that I, i'll look at that again but i think it's off to a, a, a pretty dang good start uh, more people are hitting the uh, thumbs up and it, it absolutely helps we'll see you next time mm -hmm.